Hi everybody, so I want to talk a little bit about amps and I'm just going to talk about it because we seem to have this concept that amps aren't real, but, but they are. Amps are a number of electrons moving past a point and that's where an amp is. You can think of it a bit like a ball on a table. If I put a ball on a table and don't do anything, well it's just going to sit there. I have to shove it, I have to get it moving past a point and I have to do exactly the same thing with electrons. Of course the way we shove electrons around is with a magnetic field and that's exactly what a generator does. A generator with its spinning magnets is in effect shoving electrons. Of course electrons won't go anywhere unless they've got somewhere to go and that's down a wire. They can only travel down that wire and if you have the most powerful generator in the world and you're holding the two ends of the wire no amps will flow because they've got nowhere to flow to it doesn't matter that the generator is super powerful you'll have absolutely nothing you must connect those wires together or to something else and create a circuit a circuit is just a pathway for the electrons to flow through as the magnets in the generator are giving those little electrons a push. Without that, nothing's going to happen. Of course, when they're flowing, when they're being pushed, they're being pushed against a resistance. If it's just the wire, it's the resistance of a wire. And normally we connect it to something that we want to do some work. And surprisingly enough, there are actually only three things we want to happen when we connect an electric circuit together. We want heat, we want light, or we want movement. Those three things are it. When we connect something like that in those, between those two wires to create a circuit, then the electrons will flow, we'll get a flow of amps, and they will do work. The work they do is against the resistance, the, the thing that we've put in. So if we put a heater in, it's just a straightforward coil of wire resistive heater, it's got a quite high resistance, so they need a good old shove. If we put a low value LED in there, they don't need much shove to light that LED. And lighting that LED is the work that the electrons are doing as they pass the resistance of the LED. And the same thing with motors and solenoids, which is how we get movement. They have to have a circuit with something in it that will form a resistance that we have to shove those electrons past to do work. Now we can think of it like a stone in a wheelbarrow. If you put a stone in a wheelbarrow, it doesn't take much to lift it up and move it around. But if you keep putting stones in there, of course you're going to get to a stage where you just can't lift the wheelbarrow and give it a shove. And it's exactly the same with an electric circuit. If we get a small generator and put an LED in there, you're going to like that LED because it's a stone in a wheelbarrow, it's dead easy to shove it. If we put something bigger in there, like a powerful heater, say a kettle at three kilowatts, it's like filling the wheelbarrow with stones. That load is just too great for the shove that we're giving it and then we won't be able to move the wheelbarrow. The heater won't work. It doesn't work because there isn't enough shove from the generator. Now the way we get shove from generators of course is to spin it. We have to turn it. That turning is the torque. When it comes to things like wind turbines and water wheels then we have to make the blades big enough to provide enough torque to give enough shove. And here's the key point against what we've attached. If we haven't attached a load you don't get no amps. You don't get amps unless you have a load. And your load must be matched against the amount of shove that you're giving it. So if you don't give it enough shove, then it won't move. And that's exactly what will happen to a wind turbine. If there's too much load on it, the turbine will stop spinning. If the load is very light, matched to the smallness of the turbine, we'll light it really easily because it's a wheelbarrow with one stone, it doesn't need much shove. So you've got to remember that the shove that you're giving the physical thing, the electron, is important and must be matched against the load that you're attaching to it. And those are the things that define what an amp is in order to generate. So it doesn't matter how much wire you cram into a generator. If you don't have enough turning force, enough torque, and your load is too great, it won't turn. You won't generate more amps by putting more wire in there. You generate more amps by giving it more shove. And you only do that if what you want to shove is heavy. 
It's a shove load attached to a turbine is as important as the torque that you put on the turbine. So when it comes to working out what it is you want to do, then you need to have an idea of how much you want that turbine to produce, and then you need to match that to the size of the blades that you're going to create to be able to give it that shove. Now, of course, it's not quite as simple as that, but the, here's where I get a bit more experimental. Because voltage, which is the potential difference, now that is a concept, depends on the length of the wire, the speed at which it turns, and the strength of the magnetic field that it's turning through. We can create voltage by using lots and lots of thin wire. If we have thin wire, of course, and we're creating a lot of amps, or we have a big load on it, so we need a lot of shove to create a lot of amps, then we'll probably burn out the wire. And that balance between the thickness and thinness of the wire, the load and the turning force that you're putting on, is all part of turbine design. Now, I think, and this, this, is, this is experimental, this is my ideas, I think that because we can transform voltage and amps relatively easily to give us power on the output, I think voltage is more important. Now, I could well be wrong about that. I, I don't know. I just think that way. So I think that if we can create a very high voltage, a low ampage, and transform it to the load that we need, we're going to be able to create wind turbines more cheaply, more efficiently, and uh, that are going to be better in the long run. But again, those are just ideas. And when you think about how I make some of these things, you should be able to see that what I'm looking for is um, speed and length of wire and strength of magnetic field, very high voltages, very low amps, so that I can transform them later. But again, that's just ideas, not sort of general thought of. Generally, when you're thinking about designing a generator, what you're thinking of is um, what your load is going to be when it's attached to it. That'll help dictate the thickness of the wire, which will help dictate how much wire you put in, and then, of course, how much turning you're going to need to put on that. So if you're thinking about a hydroelectric generator, then how much water you're going to put. If you're thinking about a wind turbine, then how big your blades are and how much your likely wind is going to be. But the key point here is that amps are a real thing. They're a moving electron that you need to give a shove to through a load. Without those three things, there are no amps. So think about what your load is, think about um, what your generator size is going to be and the wire size in there to cope with the amps you want to produce, and then what torque you're going to have to put into your generator in order to give it the shove that it needs in order to do the work you want it to do. Anyway, I <laughs> go through those things. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope it made sense. Thank you very much for watching.